be in the house of the Lord. Amen. Just a wonderful day already.
Showing his support. I love Brother Bill. He served with us for many years and meant a lot through it to us through the years. And we just thank him for all he is and what he stands for. Amen. Just ask him. Amen. Three years in the making. Brother Reagan said this morning, how many years is it going to take for us? <laughs> it's been a long time, Brother Donnie. But I'm glad that he saw the finished product. <laughs> Hallelujah. There was one that saw the finished product. That's all that was needed. Sometimes in a, with a project like this, it takes one to have a vision. And maybe he kind of sees the, the finished product when nobody else does. It's like God. Amen. Let's bow our heads for prayer. Heavenly Father, we thank you for the privilege that we have of being here at this meeting. I don't feel like a stranger. I feel like that I'm part of this church. That's why I wanted to be here at this meeting. I pray that you'll bless these saints. And as I look around at many old friends, and as our prophet told us, that the old friends are the best friends. And yet we come to a place like this, and we meet new friends, and then next time we see them, they're old friends. So what a glorious thing that that is. We know that one day on the other side we'll have a grand meeting that'll never end, and we look forward to that. But until that time, may we worship you in this place. As our prophet said, as if we are already in that place. Bless the service, the offering, all that's done. Let it be for your honor and glory in Jesus Christ's name. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. God bless you. Be seated this evening. Amen. Have Sister Alina that's here with us, Brother Wendell Martin's sister. Amen. Come all the way from Arizona to be with us, and we're very thankful for that. He tried to get her to sing Wednesday night, but she wouldn't, so we're going to ask her to sing tonight. 
Amen. And come bless us. Amen. We're very thankful for the gift of God in our lives. So, amen. Let's just sing you. He's all I need. Just as you come. Amen. He's all I need. He's all. The fact is you're not in a battle and you fear that you're losing the war and the fact is it's racial the story. 
to be facts we find out later it's false news amen and hell has nothing but false news and we're thankful for that amen amen we have a brother here that's very dear to our heart and uh, he's a pastor in Amarillo Texas and we started this building project and he came and we you know we have a lot of talents in our church and we've seen a lot of their talents and things and we're very blessed um, one thing we didn't have was a plumber, and, uh, and Brother Jeremy Schreiner came, and, and he helped us several times, made several trips, spent several weeks um, taking care of the underneath, and then top out, and then trim out, and then also his brother came and helped as well. I don't think he was able to make it to the meetings, but hey amen, we, um, we're just really thankful for that. So we're going to ask him to come tonight and, and share what is on his heart and song. He's a wonderful minister and singer. And uh, we're going to ask him to come at this time and amen and share with us. And uh, wouldn't mind, I'd just like, if you want to join in with us, but ELT to give him a hand. Amen. For, and thank you for all that he's done. bless you. Thank you for that return. <laughs> Do you love the Lord with all your heart? <sighs> I would lie to you if I said I wasn't nervous. Um, a lot of waters went under the bridge since I sang this song to you people and since I started singing it myself. And Maybe tonight, if this could be a testimony from all of us, that no matter what has happened in our life, no matter the circumstances, no matter what we've been through, we're still here. Amen. Yes. Try not to stay emo get too emotional, but we're here. Hallelujah. 
We've made it through some storms, haven't we? One more moment, I just feel it, and we're gone out of this place. And I just want to kick the devil with this song tonight. And no matter what, would you please be a testimony with this song to me tonight as well? and save the day but once again I say amen and it's still raining and as the thunder rolls I barely hear you whisper through the rain I'm with you sing it with me and as your mercy falls I'll raise my hands Praise the God who gives and takes away. And I will praise you in this storm. And I will lift my hands. For you are who you are. No matter where I am. And every tear I cry, Lord, you hold in your hand. You never left my was told well, I will praise you in this storm well, I remember when I stumbled in the wind you heard my cry and you, you raised me up again well, my strength was almost gone what can I carry on if I can't find you? But as the thunder rolls, I barely hear you whisper through the rain. I'm with you. Can you do this? And as your mercy falls, I'll raise my hands and praise the God who gives. Oh, Here I cry, but you hold. 
Hallelujah. I love it. No matter where I am, it don't change who you are. He's still God. No matter what the situation, whatever you have need of tonight, he's still God. Ask the youth choir to come. You alone are all I need for you.
aren't you thankful for that? Yes. Amen. What a faithful God. How can we say that? Because he said it. He said, I'll never leave you or forsake you, but I'll be with you there to the end. Amen. We're going to ask Brother Philip and those who sing with him to come. Amen. Spirit of God, move. Watch your Raging at my feet, I can feel the breath of those surrounding me. I can hear the sound of nations rising up. We will not be overtaken, we will not be overcome. I can walk down this dark and painful road. I can face every fear of the unknown. I can hear all God's children singing out. We will not be overtaken. 
Praise the Lord tonight. Hallelujah. Same power. Same power. Same glory. No weapon formed against you. We will not be overtaken. We will not be overcome. him tonight. Oh, yes, he reigns. Our God reigns. Oh, our God reigns. Oh, our God reigns. Hallelujah. Oh, our God reigns. Yes, our God reigns.
Amen. 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 My, what a mighty God we serve tonight. And as the choir sang, we will not be defeated. This bride ain't leaving out of here a defeated bunch of people. But an overcoming church. Amen. A powerful church. Amen. One who knows her position. Amen. That they are the bride of Jesus Christ and they have been commissioned. You're an age, you're a time that God has commissioned the people to fulfill the great commission. It could not have been done in prior ages because Jesus said this gospel must be preached in all the world and then shall the end come. And so the end couldn't come until this gospel could be preached again. Amen. Not a part of the gospel, but the full gospel. And it would take our re restoration to bring us back to the full gospel once again. And we today are preaching the gospel of Jesus Christ. Amen. Because the seals are taken off of the book. Amen. The mystery has been revealed. Amen. And you're a part of this great end time plan. And I want to say he's alive, but he's not just living up there. He's alive in bride form right here upon the earth. Well, he's going to use you to conquer the enemy. Amen. He's going to use you. Blessed be the name of the Lord. As we look at this momentous time and each service has been so great as we just have this celebration together to come and rejoice with us. And as we prepared for these meetings, as I made plans step by step with my team of deacons and trustees, and we planned out this building. We had plans. You know, we, we live in a time where so many nonsensical things come and where even altars got removed from churches and we don't want no altars. We don't want nobody boohooing and crying at our altars. And we want an altar where people can meet God, where they can weep their way to Calvary, where they can have their own personal experience with God. Amen. I'm glad to say these altars have already been bathed with tears. Amen. But this is only the first of them. There'll be many more. We designed even this platform here for, for prayer lines. We could bring the people up and pray for them because we know and declare that we believe in a living God who is the same yesterday, today, and forever. And he's here to heal us, deliver us, set us free. Every situation, he's more than able to meet that need. Amen. And tonight, tonight, if you, if you brought... If you brought a situation to church, maybe you've been, had the monkey on your back with an illness or a complex or some spirit of the enemy or whatever, we're, we're going to pray tonight. We're going to see a night of deliverance for God's people. Amen. It's, it's, it's got to be more than just, you know, preaching theology. Amen, but we've got to give the opportunity for the Holy Spirit to move and to work. And I believe that God is going to work tonight. And I am thankful to be identified with men of God who believe in a resurrected Christ. Amen, who believe that Jesus Christ is the same yesterday, today, and forever. I met Brother Ron Spencer as a young man. When he was a young man, I guess I was young too. And perhaps we have grown older together. He won't admit to being old, and so I won't either. But anyway, we, I met him back 
many, many years ago and uh, in meetings that where I was ministering, meet this young brother, Ronald Dean. And through the circumstances of life, things brought us together. And I had a very, very dear friend that I want to make mention of tonight, Brother Daniel Williams, who, who left this world in 1998. The Lord took him home. He was, he was still a young man in his 40s, the early 40s. And he crossed over on the other side. And it was during those times that um, Brother Daniel's illness and whatever that we had, I, I, I invited to come and minister for our youth camp, Brother Ron Spencer. And he started coming to our youth camps and ministering. I think it was in the year 2002, just maybe four years beyond that, that that where that he first came to our our youth camp in 2002 and he preached a sermon on the mighty conquer and the holy spirit moved through that building in waves of glory and so many were just filled with the holy spirit and men and women had ex young men and women had experiences with god and got the baptism of the holy ghost and i just say even from that time, even though we'd had supernatural meetings before, it just seemed to crescendo from that moment on. So through the years, we've enjoyed Brother Ron's ministry uh, here, even at the local church, our Labor Day meetings and different things, uh, where that he's come, whatever meetings that he was able to come and minister for us, we, we have benefited. And you know, I'm glad to say, we're not in this alone. I'm glad to know that we're not just a little isolated group and it's just us four and no more. But I, I'm glad that God had in his mind a bride around the world. A, a, a people of every nation and kindred and tongue and people. And this is why that it thrills me even in this service, this, this series of service to have international representation from Africa and South Africa and Germany and 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 um, and France and, and Switzerland and Canada and the US and Norway and just just all over that that are gathered here to this meeting because we have one thing in common what brings us all together is Jesus Christ and the message that he sent here in this last day. And that gives us a common thread together and a brotherhood. And I just want you to know, you're not in this all alone. But God has a people. We're a part of a great end time plan. And I can't be what I am without you. And you can't be what you are without me. When I received the baptism of the Holy Ghost, I was just a young boy. Some of you wasn't even born. This one got the Holy Ghost on this day, and this one got it on that day, and another this year, and another that year, and another. We didn't get it all at the same time. God dealt with us individually. But the great rapture of the church, the change of the body, is not going to be that way. Where did he'll take one one year and one another and he'll take this and on his own, his own private rapture here? No, we're all going in this together. And do you know what that means? It means I can't go without you. And no matter how ready I think I may be, I got to wait on you. And some of you, I got to say, I've been waiting on you a long time. <laughs> and there is something that is required for this great rapture, and it's the token. The Holy Ghost is your ticket to the rapture. And you get that? Amen. That's your guarantee you're not going to be left behind. 
Amen. I, I tell you, there's still some tickets available. Amen. God has some more gifts to pour out. And we've been waiting on you. And we're looking for the last one to hand out that last ticket. Now, I don't mean hand it out that we can give it, but for God to give it. Amen. To, to that individual. And we must find them. And this is one reason that we have moved out of the backwoods of Louisiana and come right here in where we are today because we want to do everything we can to reach out to every, every community, every, every nook and cranny of the world. And wherever, even, even wherever the Internet will reach or however it reaches, we've got to do our part. And I can't do it all. And I thank God that God sent other men and ordained other men who could bear part of this burden. But not only me, not only preachers, but every one of you have got the responsibility of taking this word out to the world, to the neighborhood where you're at, to the workplace where you're in, to the schools, to the colleges, to wherever it is, the job, the workplace, to be a testimony of Jesus Christ. Amen. I want you to invite the Holy Spirit to speak to you tonight. And I've invited my friend, and all these brothers have been my friends. But I've invited Brother Ron Spencer to come tonight and let God speak through the gift that God has placed in his life. When Jesus ascended on high, he sent back gifts to the earth. And I'm glad that he reserved some for this last day. And I appreciate Brother Ron Spencer and his, his ministry that he has. And tonight, we want to hear again from God as we have this more from this morning and the other services past. But tonight for this service, and I'm going to tell you why I'm doing this. When I was a boy preacher, it got to the point where we were afraid to pray for the sick because, oh, that might be taking Brother Branham's place. And we were afraid to, we were told not to sing. I'm, I'm telling you the truth. We were told not to sing, only believe, because that was Brother Branham's song, and we shouldn't sing that. That, that was his song to bring him out. And, but did you know Brother Branham said that only believe is a song the angel of the Lord liked to hear? He would draw near. And when we can get people to believe, there's, it's unlimited to what God will do. Amen. And so tonight, I'm going to defy that, that stigma that says we can't sing, only believe, when we call the ministry of this word out because we're preaching the same message that God ordained in this last day by men of God in this day, and we're going to sing only believe all things are possible because we're still believers. That's what we do. We believe. Amen. Let's worship God as we sing it. Only believe. Only believe. Make this confession, Lord, I believe. Now make this your own confession.
that tonight? Do you really believe that tonight? Then all things are absolutely possible. Maybe you have a need on your heart that you'd just like to say, Lord Jesus, would you pass by my way? My way tonight. My way tonight. This service tonight can be life-changing. Congressman Upshaw could testify of that kind of a service. Blind Bartimaeus could testify of that kind of a day. Today could be life-changing for you. A lot of things have been prepared for this evening. You've heard the greatest preaching on earth this week. God sent his best to speak to you. God orchestrated this meeting. We don't have to apologize for that. Let's just speak to him just now. I would like for you personally to invite him to your pew, to where you're standing. Could you do that? Almighty God, how we love you with all of our hearts. And even now, we're very much aware of your presence being in this room. Lord, it's because that you ordained this place to happen. You brought all of this together. You laid it on Brother Tim's heart and gave him a vision that this is the place that you wanted to meet with your children. You chose this place. You chose this hour. We hear the, th the words debt-free building. It's because God chose to have a place like this. God orchestrated it, Father, from the very planning stages. Now, Lord Jesus, we have gathered for this evening. And dear God, you've gathered us from all places of the earth. Now, Lord, we didn't come to see a man any this week, and we've seen you. Now, Lord Jesus, one more time, if we could find favor from you, that you would just anoint lips of clay and anoint our hearts, Father. Now, Lord Jesus, don't let us miss our opportunity. We rebuke the enemy of hell that would try to even rob us even now, taking our thoughts in different directions. We ask you, Father, that you would touch your children. Oh, God, may you anoint Lord Jesus, this place to be a place to where that the sick and infirmity of soul, body, and spirit can come and be healed. Oh, Lord Jesus, this afternoon, Father, we welcome you here one more time and we're thankful for it. In the name of Jesus Christ, we pray. Amen and amen and amen. Isn't he lovely? Amen. I'd like to say thank you to Brother Tim for inviting me to come. Like, like many of you, thank you for being a great friend to us. And uh, <clears throat> we certainly love Brother Tim and his family and this church. And we go back a long way. Some of us look older than others. <laughs> Amen. Brother Tim's the kind of guy when you're sick and they say you're dying and they're going to harvest your organs, just call him to come pray for you. Amen. 
Hallelujah. I just want to remind the devil of that tonight before we even get started. I thought of, I was, as I've heard the ministers this week, I thought, oh man, I'm not a preacher. And this morning, I, 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 Brother Donnie had my watch, but I was hoping that thing would just stop and he could just preach all day. I so love that. Amen. Amen. I thought of Brother Wayne as he, he was preaching last night. It must have been like the preacher that Brother Branham talked about. Now that's a preacher. Amen. That's a preacher. Amen. I want to share some scriptures with you this evening as I get myself steady just for a moment. I'd like for you to turn with me to 2 Corinthians chapter 11 and verse 1, and then I would like to go to Genesis chapter 4. I would like to speak this evening on jealousy at the altar. Second Corinthians chapter 11 and verse 1. I would to God that you could bear with me a little in my folly and indeed bear with me. For I am jealous over you with godly jealousy. For I have espoused you to one husband that I might present you as a chaste virgin to Christ. But I fear lest by any means as the serpent beguiled Eve through his subtlety, so your minds should be corrupted from the simplicity that is in Christ. For if he that cometh preacheth another Jesus, whom we have not preached, or ye receive another spirit which ye have not received, or, or another gospel which ye have not accepted, ye might well bear with him. You may be seated. I'd like to go to Genesis chapter 4 and verse 1. And Adam knew Eve his wife and she conceived and bare Cain and said, I have gotten a man from the Lord. And she again bare his brother Abel, and Abel was a keeper of sheep. But Cain was a tiller of the ground. And in the process of time, it came to pass that Cain brought of the fruit of the ground an offering unto the Lord. And Abel, he also brought of the firstlings of his flock, and of the fat thereof, and the Lord had respect unto Abel and to his offering. But unto Cain and to his offering he had not respect. And Cain was very wroth, and his countenance fell. And the Lord said unto Cain, Why art thou wroth, and why is thy countenance fallen? If thou doest well. Now notice God even gives him a chance. If thou doest well, shalt thou not be accepted? And if thou doest not well, sin lieth at the door. And unto thee shall be his desire, and thou shalt rule over him. And Cain talked with Abel his brother. And and it came to pass that when they were in the field, that Cain rose up against Abel his brother and slew him. And the Lord said unto Cain, Where is Abel thy brother? And he said, I know not. Now notice Cain is talking to God. Notice his attitude. Where is Abel thy brother? And he said, I know not. Am I my brother's keeper? And he said, What hast thou done? 
The voice of thy brother's blood crieth unto me from the ground. And now art thou cursed from all the earth which hath opened her mouth to receive thy brother's blood from thy hand. And when thou tillest the ground, it shall not henceforth yield unto thee her, her strength. A, a fugitive and a vag vagabond shalt thou be in the earth. And Cain said unto the Lord, My punishment is greater than I can bear. From that text tonight, I'd like to just speak to you jealousy at the altar. I'd like to take you back to family camp of this year. And the last service that I spoke with you, we, we had quite a wonderful service, and some of you were there, and remember the kind of services that we had. And, and the Lord just came to us in a very special way. It was the night, and I'll just, some of you will recognize this quickly. It was the night at the end of the service that we begin to, begin to, as we come down to the end, I begin to say that we've had miracles among us. Right. And I called Sister Connie. Sister Connie had sarcoidosis, and the doctor said that, that if that was cancer, she would be gone in two weeks. And today, she is in complete remission. And I asked her to walk to the altar, and Sister Karen, I asked Sister Karen to come to the altar, and many of you know her testimony of a brain bleed that took place, and God just worked an incredible miracle, even to which Brother Wayne that spoke last night, spoke the night to which that she would come off of a bed to the service. And in that service, God would supernaturally come down and, and touch her body. But she would travel to Germany. And there was many things that she was struggling with there. And in Germany, Brother Colin Brenner, the meeting that you had in Germany, on that last night in that prayer line, God rich in mercy came and healed her body. Sister Mariah, she's in the building somewhere. Sister Mariah had a condition to which that her, that, and I'm sorry I don't have the name on my, but she was balding and losing all of her hair. And she was wearing hats. And, and Sister Mariah, we would invite her because sometimes miracles can't be seen. We can listen to miracles and we can hear miracles, but there's just something about sight that sometimes we just want to see God. And I want to just tell you that if you've never seen a miracle, Sister Mariah is a miracle of Almighty God. Brother Michael Dexter with his little boy that, that was born with a deform, deformity in his body and God rich in mercy came and touched him at the same time that he touched Sister Karen at their home and God healed him. It was a night that Brother Donnie we were in the prayer line and in that night I turned to Brother Timothy and I said I just saw a vision of, of Drew walking. God rich in mercy. Little Drew's in the building tonight and he's walking real well. Many received their healings even on that night. But as I was leaving the stage, and you forgive me just for a moment, but as I was leaving the stage, I, I felt kind of, I, I kind of felt odd in the momentum of that incredible meeting and all that was happening and the supernatural that was taking place. God spoke these words into my ear, jealousy at the altar. I 
would go home and I would think over these things and I would begin to say, God, what do you, what do you have? What, what is on your, what is, what is, what do I do? How do I place these scriptures and in a great meeting like this, this evening and I'm going to just say some things, and if I extend myself out there just a moment. It was Tuesday night. We had went to bed. At 3.33 in the morning, I was awakened by a being that was in the room. He's that same God. And the Holy Spirit came in a very supernatural way and helped Brother Donnie give me instructions of, of where I was to go this evening. Sometimes when we come to a meeting like this, we, if we're not careful, we'll miss the moment. We'll miss the moment. I think of Brother Ed being in the room this afternoon and, and what he means to the message of the hour. What a special gift that he is to the whole bride of Jesus Christ. I, I, I've heard the, the stories and watched his ministry through my whole life. And I think about how that God has blessed him. And we as a body of believers here tonight have been given special grace. That in a very difficult time that he could come to this meeting and be a part of this meeting. This is a dedication of a building to which that God built. I don't want to apologize for that. God chose this place. We looked at the plans. I was with Brother Tim and he showed me plans and he told me about buying this acreage and he told me about the fences that was on it. He drove me out here on occasions and showed me this is where we want to build a church. Then he began to take me through what, it, what his plans were and we talked and and then before long pictures started coming. God had something on his mind that he wanted to accomplish. It's been said before and I say it again. God's got something on his mind that he wants to accomplish. If all it is is a building, we've missed the point. <laughs> And I want you to just understand, I'm, I'm going to go to some st touchy spots this evening, but I've been given some direction. <clears throat> only in this message, only under this word, was the word opened up to us to where we could understand the book of Genesis. Where men would build altars. And Cain would build an altar. Brother Brown said he was a believer. And he would build an altar of his works and his beauty. And he, he built a beautiful altar. And he came back to worship God. He wasn't trying to worship the devil. He came to worship God. And he wanted to gain access. He wanted to gain access with God. Our prophet says a nun doesn't want to go to the, to, the, to the school to become a nun, to be a bad person. And I don't even mean to put these two together, but our Cain wanted access to God. I would say even Lucifer wants access to God. Cain built an incredible altar. It was an altar to which that he would put great pride and 
put great work into. And he was looking for acceptance. But there was another altar that was going to be built. This altar would be, would have ultimate cost involved into it. Because it would require blood. There was no one to teach Abel about gaining access, but something dropped into his heart. A real revelation dropped into his heart that it had to be blood. It had to be blood. No doubt he tied a rope around the neck of a little lamb. I would say that he, if we could just say this, and that he checked that lamb up all over to make sure that there was no blemishes in him whatsoever. He made sure that that was a perfect lamb that he was bringing to his altar because God don't want our seconds and our thirds. He wants all of our hearts. And he brings this lamb before the altar and he lays that lamb on that altar and he picks up a sharp rock and takes that stone and begins to beat on that lamb. Now I know it wouldn't be politically correct today, but the blood was flying all over Abel, and that lamb was screaming with everything that was within him because it was costing him his life. Life was going to be pulled out of him. And Abel was identified with his sacrifice. He was identified this day with his sacrifice. Now there was great difference between these two altars. Both offered worship. Both came before God. But the difference is one was accepted and the other one was not accepted. Are you with me now? I don't care how beautiful your altar is tonight. I don't care how much of intellectual ability and how many D's that you have behind your name. I don't care how many plaques that you've got on your wall. If you don't have God, you've missed the whole picture. I don't care how big of a home that you have. I don't care what kind of a car that you drive. I don't care what your family name is. If you don't have God, at the end of the day, you miss the whole picture. I wonder sometimes who we're trying to impress. Our prophet was very careful. He was extremely careful about pleasing God. He was careful in his home about even the pictures that was hung. He was careful kind of what he drove. He was careful about the tabernacle. But he was extremely careful about the message that was preached. Because he wanted to please God. Our prophet was, did not have a peer around him. Nobody else was opening the seals. Nobody else was meeting with angels. There was other ministries that could no doubt go faster. That could say words that were, may have been great of a great influence. But nobody was standing at the end of the service and saying, you know I'm waiting on something. Nobody had this kind of a favor. Now, let me just say this to you like Abraham. When God spoke to Abraham, he said, I am thy shield and I am thy buckler. God chose Abraham. Abraham did not choose God. Understand very clearly, you may have thought that you were trying to choose God. 
and making vows before God, but you were not looking for God. God came looking for you. And maybe even in this meeting, there's decisions that's being made in your mind. And maybe you've thought, I'm going to look at this message, and I, I, I'm going to look. Let me just say this to you. It's God that has brought you to this moment. Because you didn't bring yourself to this moment. God brought you to this moment. And he's not ashamed of where you're at. He already knew where you're at, whether you were a prostitute or a religious fanatic. He knew where to find you, what well that you'd be setting on. And he knows how to draw you to himself. Are you with me just now? I want you to understand. God explained it to Abraham. I am thy shield, and I am thy buckler. We will find that, that Abraham would also be contested at his altar. It would be a matter of, a, a matter of and I just want to take you through a couple of these examples very quickly. It would be, Abraham would not have a life that would be exactly all luxury and everything be perfect and fun. It would be his own kin people that would cause him much trouble. His own kin people. Lot, a man that he had brought along. Sometimes we find by bringing people along, we have to take care of them. Sometimes you find people that come along for the association of the message. And down the road, they will contest you at the altar. But if you'll notice, Abraham never left the altar. He wanted to stay where God was. It was Lot that made a choice. And he chose, he chose the green pastures. But he never intended to go where he was going. But I want to remind you, sin will take you further than you ever thought that you would go. No doubt, Abraham being a rich man, Lot no doubt thought that I should be successful. So it was contesting at an altar. We will find this in several places. It was Elijah that stood with the children of Israel. And he stood there with them and asked them the question, why halt you between two opinions? Now they were being called back to an altar. How long will you serve other gods? It's at an altar. Let me just say this to you. We don't have second chances here. We don't want to just go through this life and miss our opportunity. I don't want to wait 50 years and then say, I, I wish I'd have done something different. Brother Brandon would even make the statement in Blessing Prophet. He said, I look at all the opportunities that I've missed. I look at the opportunities that I missed. I wonder sometimes how many services that we set in that we really don't set in. was a man named David that was mentioned this morning. And David was mentioned, but I want to remind you that David had some situations of life that he had to be dealt with. David would even be forgotten by his father when it come time to anoint a king. As, he, as Samuel comes to their house, and Samuel, as he comes to the house to where that there's going to be a king anointed, God in his mind has already passed on 
from Saul. Though Saul was still king, God had already passed on. Even the Pentecostals today don't realize that God's done passed on. He's done moved on. You can write Ichabod on the door. You can keep having churches and it looks like people getting saved and miracles happening. But God's done passed on. Are you with me just now? Let me just say even to our message assemblies. Let me just say this to you. Don't get bogged down in your intellectual ability of the message of the hour. Your computer can outquote you. And it can dot every I and cross every T, but it can't live it. It cannot live it. David would be invited from taking care of the sheep. Today, it would be kind of a different sort of a day. He would not understand the ramifications of what today would be like. But as he's invited to his house, today he would come and the prophet of the Lord is here. And he doesn't understand that that even Samuel thought that his oldest brother looked the part. His oldest brother looked like he'd make a good king. Even to where that that Samuel, a prophet, wanted to anoint him to be the king. And then he would go down to the next one and God would have to speak to him. He's not the one. And then he would come to another brother and he would want to pour the anointing on him but he's not the one. And he would go to another brother but he's not the one. He would go through all of his brothers and and God would have to remind Samuel and Samuel knows that he is at this house for an important purpose. He has come to this place for an important purpose. And he knows that he hasn't missed God. That is absolutely right on target that there's a king that's going to come from this house. But he's looked at all of these these fine young men that that come from this seed. And he's looked at all of them and God hasn't chosen any of them. And he actually turns to Jesse and says, do you have one more? Do you have another? Do you have any more children? Do you have any more children? Now listen, we're human beings here. We're human beings here. And there's just something about humanity that feels the twinge of jealousy. So now let me cut his head off. (laughs) Let me take you back to the garden. And I'll get back to David's house in just a few minutes. Two men have an, an altar. And one is accepted. And the other one's rejected. And instead of saying I repent and I'm sorry and I've got to do business with God to do whatever I've got to do to make it right. He chose the attitude, well this is as good as I can get. You can take it or leave it. That's direct words from the prophet. Just take it or leave it. I don't want that attitude with God. So many times, so many of our problems in life extend from our original business with God. We didn't give him all of our hearts. And there's still some living mortal among us. 
And because we do not want to die out to certain things that are in our lives and destroy idols that are in our lives, we continue to repeat the process of victories and failures over and over and over and over and over again. I know this isn't a convention service, but I was instructed of God to preach it to you. As pastors, we watch people come to certain places in their life only only to grow so far and then all of a sudden get stunned or ensnared by an enemy that comes. I remember Brother Roy Shrewsbury one night. We'd had an incredible meeting in his place and the altar was packed. We walked into the back room and Brother Roy Shrewsbury said, what a meeting and He said, Brother Ron, he said, through the years of pastoring, he said, the people that come to the altar makes me so happy, but what makes me so concerned is those that don't come. I would understand that. I would would get old enough to have gray hair and understand some of that. So I'd like to call out to you tonight, there's a word. That you don't have to live with that slavery any longer. God gave Cain an opportunity. He gave him an opportunity to do as your brother. We know the story. But only in this day. With this revelation could we look back and see. Because he came to this generation. And had it not been for God coming and showing us the book and opening the book to us, we would have been deceived. Because we couldn't recognize even who we were until he came to us. Coming to an altar. Many people come to great gatherings. Many people very spend incredible money, and I know many of you have came, and some of you flew, and you spent weeks of salary to come to this meeting. And you've received great blessings, eternal blessings from Almighty God. Things that you will relish the rest of your life. You've came to this meeting, and God's blessed you. Sometimes the Satan will whisper in your ear, but you could have used that money somewhere else. But I want to remind you of when you were in sin. He didn't remind you when you were going to NASCAR races and football games and baseball games and spending hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of dollars on a weekend. And you were getting drunk and your mind was almost blowed up and, you're, and you were taking drugs and, and you were doing all those kind of things and on Monday you were broke all over again. He's a very difficult taskmaster. Sometimes we come to church and we feel like that we need to be like church mice. But if you remember just a few years ago, you were screaming and pulling your shirt off and you were jumping and knocking and frailing your neighbor and you were screaming for your gods. If your God got a touchdown, you were screaming and hollering and hoping and if he knocked a home run across the fence, you were screaming. Those guys never knew who you were or never knew you were in the stands. We'll wear their shirts, we'll wear their hats, we'll, 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 we'll got a coat, and we're identified with a certain, are you with me now? Are you with me? That's a form of worship. Because worship comes from our hearts. 
and it comes through our physical being and God gives us air in our lungs and we begin to breathe out across our vocal cords and we begin to worship before Almighty God because human beings were built with a, with, a, with a thirst inside of them to give back to God. But if we're not careful, we'll substitute that thirst But Satan's very jealous of our worship. So when it comes to our worship, he didn't mind us worshiping at games and worshiping at great attractions and maybe political arenas. It's unimaginable for me for 80,000 people together at a political deal to where that somebody's wanting to run for the president and they'll gather with their flags and their hats they'll travel all over America and they'll gather and cheer and scrimp knowing that man's lying that man can't do what he says that he's going to do He's not going to buy you a new car. He's not going to pay your student debt off. Don't get mad at me. He's not going to do it. He just wants your vote. It's amazing to me that people will get under such the power of influence. And not realize that there's a spirit in all of that. It's a spirit in the ball. It's a spirit in, in music. It's a spirit in that rock and roll. It's a spirit that just, just begins to captivate. It's a spirit that begins to move. Even sometimes great political leaders almost become like gods. That sometimes will become in the religious realm to where men will begin to almost worship men. And men will think that they're greater than their God. And they'll lift themselves. Are you with me now? And any ministry that lifts itself above the word comes from the wrong dimension. And it is building the wrong kind of an altar. <clears throat> Our prophet would speak sermons like chosen place of worship. Do you think that that was not a very difficult sermon to preach to those audiences? Because when he ended the sermon, God hasn't chosen their house. Let's just be real clear here. As great a speaker as Brother Branham is, and, but now he's calling him a blasphemous name. And for us, he called us eagles, but he didn't necessarily call everybody eagles. Recently in our church, a young brother was beginning to witness to his denominational friends. And he had an uncle that he was witnessing to and that uncle throwed the book down, name above all names. And he said, I don't want that trash. Two other men grabbed it up and said, can we read it? And now they're sitting on my front row. where you're at Cain didn't realize that his altar being accepted would cost him his life 
He did not realize that he was going to be the, the type of Calvary. Let me just say this, and sometimes it's difficult to say it. But your criticism is your vindication. Sometimes when the heat is on your pastors and you're watching your pastors under great heat and the devil is trying to destroy their ministry, it is, it is evidence that that ministry is causing Satan very much harm. Sometimes we struggle with that as humans. We struggle with criticism. You may have never heard me preach like this, but I just want to just deliver my heart. All of us want to be liked. For many men, they could have been great businessmen, political leaders, but God chose a different path. Sometimes as your pastor, you don't realize that that man is, is, is working for God. And what you see is your brother. What you see is your human brother. What you see is your human uncle. What you see is your human cousin. And you miss seeing God. You miss seeing what God has doing through that vessel. Are you with me just now? Because if we're not careful, it becomes common to us. Billy Branham became common to many people. But we saw the voice behind the voice. We heard the voice. Are you with me just now? We heard more than a Kentuckian's voice. A prophet would tell us there's twins of every revival. Esau and Jacob. Jesus and Judas. And we'll have a twin too. Ruth was standing there one day with her mother-in-law in a very difficult time. They had lost their husbands. They had lost their income. They had lost their businesses. It looked like they had lost everything. You see, when God's time to fulfill Scripture was at hand, they didn't get a letter in the mail telling them that their world was getting ready to fall apart. And now they're standing in a very difficult spot. It's a spot of decision. Now maybe there's some people that are even dealing with it tonight that you just really haven't made a wholehearted decision. And Ruth is standing in a very difficult spot. And there's a sister-in-law that's with her. And her sister-in-law has been able to make it through some very difficult hours. But now it comes time. Are you going to go all the way? And she's going to make a decision. Both of them are asked, do you want to go back home? I can't raise any more children for you. If, if I could, would you wait for them? I, it would, it, you couldn't do that. If I would have sons, you, you, couldn't, you, you couldn't wait for them. 
And Orpha comes to the moment and, and she makes a decision to kiss her mother-in-law and embrace them and, and tell them, I, I'm going back. We don't hear any more about her. And sometimes we have great stress and great difficulty about people that come to a spot and turn around and go back. And we stress way beyond what we really need to stress because God's got a plan. God has a plan. And as long as I'm in the middle of that plan, let come what may, I refuse to go back. I want to say this to you, there's nothing to go back for. Today, David doesn't understand. He doesn't understand that his brothers are now looking around him and he's now bowing. Oil's being poured over top of him and there's a great emotional experience that's going on. The prophet of God is speaking over top of him and he doesn't understand the plan of God. He just doesn't understand me. He don't know what this means. All he knows is he's been taking care of sheep. And he's been stacking up experience with God. And he's singing songs before God. And, and he's just, and nobody's watching him. And nobody's, nobody's taking notes of any of the special things that's going on. But he's found favor with God. And now the oil is being poured over top of him. How did I get chosen? How did I get chosen to do this job? How did I get picked? Now let me just turn it just a little, little bit. How did he get picked? I could have did a better job. If it was me, I'd do it different. This would be a difficulty that David would fight in his life. David, once this anointing would happen and he would leave, he would have to go back to taking care of sheep. He did not go to a castle to become king elect. He had to go back to taking care of sheep. And while taking care of sheep, there was development of character that was happening in his life. Because God had a big job for him to do. One day he was invited to take food to the, to, the, to the battlefield. And he's on his way to the battlefield and he was bringing victuals and he's bringing, bringing different things for them to eat. This battle was not something like he would be imagining in his mind. But today, today there was... Men in, in foxholes, a king in a backslidden condition, a church in a spot to where that there was no revival in, and there was one man on the other side making a great bluff. And David began to remark, who is that uncircumcised Philistine? David only spoke from where his altar was. And he began to respond toward that devil. Let me just say this to you. You have been ordained of God. With something on the inside of you. To respond to that devil. God anointed you. God elected you. He ordained you to do this job. He pre-planned you before the foundation of the world to be the final voice to the final age. Hey, 
Once again, we find his oldest brother. And his oldest brother tells him how naughty that he is. And trying to intimidate him. You need to be going back and taking care of that is sheep. You see, there will be a battle of intimidation that will happen to you. And you will fight it in your mind. You'll fight it in your mind because that's the only place that Satan can really get. God chose a battleground with him. And you will fight it in your mind from now to the rapture. But God gave you a word. It's more than an emotion. It is more than a feeling. We all love that. But it's more than a feeling and it's more than a preacher's word. But God wrote a covenant with you that that come what may, you can anchor your soul that God is with me. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Brother Bobby is sitting right up there. Many years ago, you took me to Life Tabernacle. You wanted to show me where it was at. It's one of my first visits to Louisiana. We walked up on the steps and we knocked on the door. There was a man painting. We walked up the we walked up the aisle, and they kind of wondered what we was doing. I'll never forget this, Brother Bobby. We walked up behind the pulpit. Though it would be a different pulpit, but we walked up behind the pulpit. Brother Bobby, you said I, I was sitting here. The man on the ladder, he couldn't figure out what we were even doing here. Why was we interested in what happened in 1965? But you were standing with me, took me back to that spot. And though the building be much different, you begin to talk to me about what it was like in that service. Do you remember that? Now the man on the ladder couldn't figure out what was going on. Though he'd be in the same building. There's some times that you can be in the same service. You can be in the same car. I was sitting in a service and I heard a sermon called Let Us Run, Brother Ed. And I had a lot of friends around me. They're no longer here. But something on the inside of me blowed up. Amen. <laughs> Brother Biscoe, you, in that service, you challenged and you went back through the ages and picked out great men that spent their energies for serving God with everything that was within them. He got down to the end of that service and then he challenged the audience that was there, Brother Joe Green. Your daddy ran that camp meeting. Brother Dan Daisel, now it's your turn. Sometimes we think, oh, that was just a service. Was it really just a service? Was it really just a service? God ignited something in my heart that has never left me to this very day. He put a drive on the inside of me that's 
unquenchable. The more I get up and the more that I want. Every one of us have an experience when he comes. There's just something about him that makes all the difference. Am I okay? I grew up in the message. I stood at Brother Branham's funeral. I heard this message every day of my life. Tape after tape. And my father that's, that's, that's at home tonight probably listened to you preach, Brother Donnie. <laughs> my father, his, his favorite sermon was the way of a true prophet. And I no doubt heard that hundreds of times as a child growing, growing up. And I want to say some things here this evening. But I needed more than just his voice. I needed more than just a tape. I needed more than books. I needed him. I needed more than pictures on the wall. I needed more than a list of doctrines that would take me through certain things. I needed him. Too many times we stand and boast of what we know and we really don't know him. I appreciate man with great intellectual ability to be able to take you from deity of Jesus Christ to communion and be able to dot all the I's and cross all the T's. But if you miss him, you've missed the whole mark. Are you with me now? And listen, this message is generational. It's not just for my daddy, but it's for me. It's for my children. It's for my children's children. And the same God that ignited my daddy is the same God that ignited me. Here I am, and so here we are. I was laying, I was laying in a coma. Brother Bisco, I might as well say it publicly. Brother Bisco has dealt with my God to call my wife and to talk to her. God has spoke to him that they had built, they had bought Mount Baker Bible Way Camp. And I was to be the speaker next year. It was that day that doctors had given me up that I wouldn't live. Burned, laying in a coma, lungs 75% destroyed with pneumonia. When doctors give up, that's when God comes on the scene. God speaks to Brother Bisco. That you'll be the, that Brother Ron will be the speaker next year. That day. Sister Connie would hear from doctors that I couldn't live. But she had heard from God. He'll be the speaker next year. Brother Tim Pruitt comes later, a couple of weeks later, 
And I came out of a sedated coma and I'm, I'm awake for about 10 hours and maybe 12 hours and, 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 and I go into a non-responsive state. People say God don't do miracles anymore. They're just not looking. That was just for Brother Branham's day. God's not dead. God's not dead. We get excited about Congressman Upshaw. But what about's going on in this building tonight? Your pastor here came and I was in that non-responsive state. They didn't even know the seriousness of it. But five hours from that point that morning, they were going to harvest my organs. But God had different plans. Yeah. Hallelujah. Contested, yes, we have been contested. Been warred again, yes, we have been warred again. Fought against, yes, we have been fought against. Are you with me just now? But like David, he didn't give up. He picked up five smooth stones and he stepped across a brook. Like Elijah, he stood there and rebuilt the altar. Like Ruth said, where you go, I'm gonna go. Where you live, I'm gonna live. Where you die, I'm gonna die. Your God's gonna be my God. I'll say it tonight, we're not giving up. We're not turning around. Brother Ron, I'm a young person and I seem to be contested every day of my life. Hallelujah! Hallelujah! That means you got something that the devil wants. Because he's got all of them, but he ain't got you. listen to his brother he did not listen to his kin people he was not intimidated by them talking about him he just simply moved forward sometimes your greatest contestants that will come against you's family because you're not going to let your enemy talk to you like that but sometimes it will come in your own family and it'll be very difficult to hear at times. Sometimes it'll be difficult to pastor. Four hundred prophets screamed. They had an altar. Four hundred prophets rejoicing. But no matter what all they did, they couldn't find favor with God. And Elijah tore down all their altar. Though it be fundamentally correct and though it be fundamentally sound, he tore down their altar. And he redid that altar completely. Sometimes us as parents have to re-tear down the altars that we've had. Things that we've allowed in our homes and tear those things down. And remind ourselves that we have one mission in this life. And that mission is to serve God. Sometimes we want to read books on 
how to raise children in Laodicea. And think that somebody outside the message has got the answer. Think that they've got a magic potion for fixing our marriage. And we'll listen to some teacher somewhere or another that's got some psychological degree. And we'll think this guy's got the answer. Let me just say the answer is not in buying a $149 book. Or getting some special app on your phone. Or putting a bunch of principles in place for your children. The answer is the altar. The next house down the road may allow a whole lot of things, but you're not serving the next house down the road. We're serving God. It's not what everybody else can get by with. It's what I want to do to find favor with Almighty God. Hope I haven't taken you too long. Sometimes we'll go to a doctor. And the doctor will tell us that we've got a hereditary disease and before long he'll give us a long list of words and give us great plans. <clears throat> we walked into a doctor well, walking up, standing pretty good. We spend six minutes with the doctor and he gives us a list of medicines like this. He runs us through a donut machine. <laughs> and before long, we, we almost worship the spirit that now has got a hold of us. And you know, the arthritis in our shoulders is so bad that now we really can't put our hands together. And you know, we can't get excited. If we would get excited, it'd make our blood pressure go up. And <laughs> our anxiety level would be to the point to where that, you know, we, we might raise our blood pressure to where it might blow an artery. We can run 52 miles. But you better not stand up in church. You can be like a mouse on a treadmill. But if you come to church, you can't spend no energy. And in every conversation, you, you worship that sickness. My cancer. My heart trouble. My condition. But you know my condition. And before long, it takes on worship. Before long, that anxiety now is greater than your God. Before long, that nervous condition is controlling your family. I might as well preach while I'm here. Moody on Monday, moody on Tuesday, moody on Wednesday. Are you with me now? nervous and shook up and before long the children are shook up before long the marriage is shook up before long the home is a prison house destroy 
save the lost. Hallelujah. My God is greater than all of my diseases. Now, a lot of times in, in nervous conditions, they don't like noise. <laughs> and so they would rather have a, a quiet sort of creature. Someone with gentle hands. Maybe able to be able to speak a little Latin now and then. You know, have a certain smile. You know, you come to church and you just feel so peaceful. And nobody, nobody challenges you to step forward and make a move. Now, we'll not only want that with our preaching, we'll want it with our singing. We want something dead. Because God forbid we get emotional. Recently I baptized, not really recently, you get older, everything's recently. down in here. <laughs> As a young family walked into my office and they were in their old order Amish attire. What they had couldn't hold them. And they needed more. They began to come. They wanted to be baptized in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. I'll never forget the night that I baptized them in the watery grave of in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. They wanted to be baptized in their old order clothes. Because they wanted that thing to die. You know, when he first came to church, he, he, he didn't really know how to put his hands together. You see, he'd, he'd been under Lutheran, Lutheran singing for years, and, and he was almost scared to sing a song or, or put his hands together. You know, that lasted for just a little bit. <laughs> Brother Donnie was preaching at her place here about a year ago. And that guy came around the, the church. And when he came around the church, he did a complete cartwheel. <laughs> now, to the casual observer, they would say, now that guy's just emotional. He's got a lot of wildfire. But what you're missing is the point. What was dead is now alive. I know you're wanting a quote, so I'm going to give you one. 
Psalms 147, praise ye the Lord, for it is a good thing to sing praises unto God. Psalms 148, praise ye the Lord. Praise ye the Lord from the heavens and praise him in the heights. Praise ye him, all his angels. Praise ye him, all ye hosts. Praise ye him, sun and moon. Praise him, all ye stars of light. Psalms 149, praise ye the Lord. Sing unto the Lord a new song. And praise him in the congregation of his saints. Let Israel rejoice in him and made him. Let the children of Zion be joyful in their king. God's looking for you to make love back to him. When God comes to your altar and accepts your altar, let the devil be jealous. Let him rage. Just let him rage. He may try to murder you. He may try to destroy you. But if God is with you, there's not a devil in hell can destroy the purpose of God in your life. God elected you. God anointed you. God predestinated you. To be the very living word of this day. Third pull, it's in you. Seventh seal, it's in you. This word chose a place to be tabernacled in. This chosen place of worship. Want another quote? Let the saints be joyful in glory. Let them sing aloud upon their beds. Let the high praises of God be in their mouth and a two-edged sword in their hand to execute, execute vengeance upon the heathen and punishments upon the people, to bind their kings with chains and their nobles with fetters of iron, to execute upon them the judgment written. This honor hath all his saints. Praise ye the Lord. Psalms 150, this may be familiar to you, but praise ye the Lord. Birds praise the Lord, and if you get up early in the morning, you'll hear them praise the Lord. Trees with their great leaves on them, in the wind, begin to rejoice. But God loves to hear his children. The angels may be making all kind of a flutter, but God loves to hear his children. Brother Kelly Hildebrandt, one time when we was in the north country, he took us out on a lake. He was just kind of being very gracious to us and taking us out for a little sightseeing, and there was a, there was a tour guide that was, I hope it's all right to tell the story. But anyway, he was tour guide and, and there was a bird that was on the lake and this bird was in its nest called a loon now for us southern people we don't know what loons are maybe you do here but but anyway this bird it has a mate and, and it mates for life. And there's literally millions of them. Millions and millions of them. But they will, actually the female will fly to a different place than what the male will fly in the wintertime. The males will fly together and the females will fly together. But because the loons, all of them, though there be millions of them, Every one of them are distinct 
in their vocal cords. And they know who is who. And when they fly south and then they start flying back north when the spring starts coming in. The female will arrive early. Begin to set up places to nest. And the male will come with literally tens of thousands of other animals. Loons calling. And they're literally like thunder screaming. And they're, they're sending out their vocal cords. And female is calling to male. And though there be millions of them calling out. They can still find each other. There might be millions of worshipers. But God knows your voice. And he hears you calling through the blood. Praise God in his sanctuary. Praise him in the firmament of his power. Praise him for his mighty acts. Praise him for according to his excellent greatness. Praise him with the sound of a trumpet. Praise him with a saucer in a harp. Praise him upon the temple and a dance. Praise him with the stringed instruments and organs. Praise him upon the loud, loud cymbals. Praise him upon the high sounding cymbals. Let everything that has breath Now you have an excuse to be still if you're dead. You have an excuse to be still and not praise the Lord if you're dead. But for those that are living... about let me just tell you one more story that you've heard literally thousands of times you may be one out of your whole family and you can explain one in a million but our prophet picks up a story that Moody talks about and he said there was an armor and a company girl son that was in was looking for a wife and those in Chicago wasn't what he was looking for. So he goes to a ranch house and all the girls get ready and they put on their pomp and they put on their splendor and they put on a lot of things. But one little girl is an orphan girl. prophet tells that story and all the denominations missed it they missed it they enjoyed the signs and wonders but they missed the message and this little girl 
she wasn't who's who. And she steps out and throws some dishwater. Yeah, you know the story. They came to her. And there's just something about when he comes. It makes all the difference in the whole world. I would have said a special meeting the other day, Brother Michael, when he came to you. It was a special place. God wanted to use you in your life and call you to a higher order. And I heard you tell him, no, no, not me. I heard that. The other day when you preached your first sermon, I think my heart was beating harder than your heart. Because I was there when, when he did a work. Hallelujah. Sam, I know you're proud of your brother. I know you are. But I remember when he came to you on a porch. Grandfathers are great of great preachers. But that won't save you. But he came to you on a porch. This girl had no crutches around her that she could be helped. But here she was standing with him. Aaron just nothing like when he looks you in the eyes and you know that it's him. You know that. I'm, t I'm taking my time now to be real personal to you. Because the real deal is, is when he meets you at your altar. That's what makes the difference. You can sit in these pews for years and miss what God's doing. And I'm sorry if I take too much time. I don't want you to miss this. Don't take it for granted. You've heard the best of the best preach this week. But my challenge is to get you into his presence tonight. Where you don't miss your healing. Where you don't miss what God wants to do in your life. She stood there and she listened to him. Now, he still... His covenant with a kiss. You saw Brother Donnie do some kissing on the pulpit this morning. But this man kissed this girl on the cheek. Mariah, he kissed you on the cheek. I don't know what you'll do in life. But no matter where you go in life, your hair will be a testimony. This girl went back into the kitchen like David went back to taking care of sheep. And she just kind of casually began to talk. He said, he met me at a corral. He casually began to tell others and rumors got out. He came. He gave me a covenant. He met me. He met me. Bless 
jealousy? Who is she? Who is she? Who is she to think that she's going to be his wife? I tell you what, he told me. Let me echo it to the scream it to the highs. He told me. He told me. He told me. Every day the cleaning got better. Every day. Oh, yeah, it was the same dishes. Oh, yes, it was the same beds. Oh, yes, it was the same floors. But she was one day closer to rapture. I mean, him coming. And today was the day of promise. And today, she washed the dishes. Last time. Today, she made the beds last time. Today, she scrubbed the clothes last time. Today, she set the table last time. Hallelujah. Today, she went in and put on a wedding gown. She laid off a rag and she put on a wedding gown. And she stepped on the porch last time. Oh, glory to God. I wish you could feel what I feel standing on this pulpit tonight. One of these mornings, it's going to be our last time. Disdain. She looked with him with a goodbye. I'd like to say this tonight. Maybe the last time I ever preach to you. I want to nod my head to this world. Let you have your political agenda. Let you have your gay pride. Let you have your North Korea. Let you have your Russia. I'm gone. You can have my car, you can have my truck, you can have my house, you can have this building. It was kind of like a tomb 2,000 years ago. We don't need to buy it, we just need to lay in it for a few days. If you just lay in the ripening of the sun and eat this word and let this word so live in your life until it's no more you singing but it's him singing. You don't have to be the first trumpet. You don't have to be the first violin. Just be a compliment to the music. Just get in line. Stay in line. Stay in line. This ain't about me. This is about him. Amen. 
any real ministers of God, if they could preach behind a curtain to where you wouldn't even know their name, they would be happy. Because he's the one that's important. Because he's the one that made the difference in our lives. It was a little bit and she began to hear hoofbeats. Dust. Wagon. Horses. You see, she was ready. Soon the lamb will take his bride. To be at her, at her side. All the host of heaven will assemble here. For to be a glorious sight. All the saints in spotless white. And with Jesus we're going to feast eternally. I stepped into a room. Last year, the first day of this year. And my mother, who had believed this message with all of her heart, I would have a last conversation with her. And she told me how much she loved me. You see, this message was good to live with, but it's really good to die with. There's a feeling that they're getting ready to step in this direction. I want to finish with this tonight. If you want to fight this message, go ahead. It's just going to be background noise. Because the proof is in the seed. <laughs> the proof is in the seed. And the reason I'm here tonight is because I have great burden on my heart. I have a real burden on my heart. We can consecrate a building to the Lord. But sometimes we miss consecrating our lives. I'd like for us to bow our heads just now. I wanted to just take a, just a couple moments. Young people, moms and dads, I've watched God deal with your hearts across this audience tonight. And sometimes we don't give God our all and we just keep holding back. Maybe we sit through services and miss the moment. And you just say, Brother Ron, I need a real refilling of the Holy Spirit in my life. I need a real fresh revival inside of me. Nobody's looking around. Just be honest with God. Invite him to where you're at just now. Yes, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. As I preached, I felt him brooding to this audience. I don't want to miss this. So many times we go through the motions of things and miss what's really going on. I say, Brother Ron, I just want, I want him to come to me tonight. Yes. Yes. Thank you. Amen. Amen. 
I heard, I heard our pastor, Brother Tim Pruitt, talk about this altar. Is this okay, Brother Tim? I'd like to say to you, tonight, I'd like to come to the altar and lay my flesh upon this altar and say, God, refill me with your spirit. Don't let me drive to this meeting. Don't let me just come to this meeting and sit for a protractive meeting. I want you to come and finish the work in my life. Hallelujah. Almighty God. Lord God, I have I did my best, Father, tonight to deliver my heart the way that you've dealt with me. Lord, there's just something about when you come, it makes all the difference. Dear God, as hands as went up all across this building just now, Bartimaeus screamed, Thou son of David, have mercy upon me. And it turned Jesus in his tracks. Oh, dear God, Tonight you have turned your eyes towards us again this evening. And you pulled us up close to you. Lord, as you spoke to our hearts, may you just now come and sweep across this audience. I need you, oh, I need you every hour I need you. From the youngest to the oldest tonight, Father, I want my sacrifice to be accepted. Oh, Father, that we can find favor with you, not favor with man, but favor with you. I want to ignore my feelings tonight. I want to ignore. I want to put those things that were behind me away tonight. And I forget those things and press towards the mark of the high calling. Lord Jesus, come. You're the one that makes the difference this evening. Hallelujah. Our heads bowed just now. Hallelujah. From young people to the oldest here tonight, I want to invite you to this altar. God's dealt with your heart. I want to invite you here tonight. I need you, oh, I need you. Every hour I need you. Won't you just let him come just now? human pride for just a little bit. Holy Spirit. Oh, that you would come and deal with our hearts. No matter what season that we're in our life. Oh, 
Lord, we just need more of you. Lord, we come this weekend to dedicate this building to you, Father. And we thank you for the incredible design and the great engineering of this building. Oh, but Father, it would be void if you wouldn't come. It would be all for naught if you didn't come. Oh, Lord Jesus, we've come to this meeting this week. Lord, we just ask you just now, you'd come flood our hearts with your presence. We lay aside our opinions and our thoughts. Lord God, I just got to have more of you. I just got to have more of you tonight. I'm not satisfied with religion. I'm not satisfied with just sitting in a pew. I just got to have more than you. I've got to have more of you. Come and soak down through our lives this evening. Jesus. Let's just worship the Lord tonight. Father, come saturate my soul tonight. Many years ago, my father was told by Brother Bisco, you're standing on holy ground. I say this to you tonight, you're, you're kneeling on holy ground this evening. Hallelujah. Let him saturate your soul. Don't miss this tonight. Don't miss this opportunity tonight. Jesus, Christ. Oh, I need you. I need you. I need you. Let me put everything in order tonight. Oh, God, put everything in my life in your plans. I surrender every weakness and every habit. I surrender my all to you tonight. Lord, I'm an open book tonight. Oh, God.
just kiss the face of Jesus tonight. Tell him that again with all your heart. Oh, Lord, I love you. Yes, Lord, I love you. Lord, I love you. Oh, Lord, I love you. Oh, hallelujah. Oh, hi. 
sing it again. Hallelujah.
sacrifice as a living sacrifice and all my dreams and all my plans oh Lord Lord I place them I place them in your hands tonight and I give myself Turn. Sure. 
There's a line in the sand, I want to be standing on your side, holding your hand, so let your kingdom come, and let it And fire. 
Father, I hear it growing louder, the song of your redeemed as the bride of every nation is awakening. Oh, and from our hearts, oh yes, just hear our praises ring. This is our song, a song to our King. Let the worshipers arise. Oh, let the sons and daughters sing. Oh, I surrender it. Oh, my Lord. I surrender. We'll sing it again now. Let the worshipers. Hey, let the worshipers arise. Let the sun.
we can be worshipers to a true and living God. Hallelujah. 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 Amen. John said, all of heaven heard me. All the earth heard me. Why? Because he saw his name written in the book of La the Lamb's book of life. How many saw your name tonight? Then let heaven hear you. Let all the earth hear you. Let him that hath breath praise ye the Lord. Let the devil hear you. Hallelujah. You come in here depressed. You come in here down. Let the devil hear you. I'm free. I'm free. I'm delivered. It's over with. Hallelujah. I'm not the same person. Every chain of death is broken. I love the sounds of freedom. <laughs> Oh, glory to God. Whoo, what a mighty God we serve. What a mighty God we serve. Wonderful moments. Cherished moments. You're standing beside the crane of the crop. Believers of like precious faith. I know we do it a lot of times maybe out of uh, tradition or something. Turn around and shake your neighbor's hand. Why don't you just turn around and let the ones know I love you. I love you. Hallelujah. Father to son, mother to daughter, brother to brother, sister to sister. I love you. Jesus is the sweetest name. Oh. 
wanting to rush you away. As we've heard this weekend the building's paid for. Nobody's going to come in and shut off the lights. You're welcome to stay and worship the Lord. Tomorrow service at 11 again. God bless you tonight. Don't forget these moments in His presence. <laughs> One day it won't be just a moment. It'll be forever and throughout eternity. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. God bless you, friends. If you'd like to go, if you'd like to stay for a moment and worship, you're free to do so. Amen. Till, till we meet again tomorrow. Oh, Jesus is the sweet. Yes, sweet.